colleges will close to contain the spread of the virus. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. When we see this kind of profound shutting down of the transportation sector, this seems to be a good thing for that other deadly global crisis, climate change. A lot of critical pollutants are dropping um, in their concentrations. The corona effect on the climate is just temporary. Never will so many ask so much or so few. We need more engineers. You cannot say this loudly enough. Our young people are resourceful. Resilient, creative, and courageous. Fundamental transformation of how the world works, about how energy is delivered. The turbine uh, recharging system. And a small size micro turbine generate power and then use that power to charge a battery. And then that battery runs an electric drivetrain. There was a time of transition where there were horses and gasoline cars on the road at the same time. It's been pretty weird. My name is Lorcan Diskin and today I'll be running through the bearings and seals selected as well as the steam flow path of our current turbine design. The steam enters through the inlet port and into the central hub. From there it travels through the nozzles leaving at a lower pressure and thus a higher velocity causing the blades and the connected shaft to rotate and out through the two outlet ports. Overall there are eight sealing points identified and two o-rings identified here with the red circles and two uh, teflon gaskets identified with the green circles were used to seal between the nozzle hub and the central hub. Two additional o-rings identified here with the yellow circles were used to seal between the central hub and the house. The blue circles indicate the position of the rotary shaft seals. During assembly the seals are placed in the grooves on the shaft. The split housing is then fitted over the rotor assembly and the taper bores are used to pinch and close the shaft seals. The shaft is then held in place using two angular contact hybrid ball bearings with an interference fit on the left and a clearance fit on the right. The yellow circle here indicates a 2 mil clearance which is available to allow the shaft as it expands thermally. Hi, my name is Eva. <laughs> My name is Aoife, I was primarily focused on the blade design and the water treatment and flow control of the dynamometer. A power output of 1.5 kilowatt was desired by the team and from this point we started to design the blade. After analysing the last year's blade, certain aspects were overlooked. Pitch, cord length and blade face analysis was something included in this year's design and analysis. Velocity diagrams were initially constructed to identify the blade um, angle and relative blade velocity after calculating the blade speed. Initially, after constructing the velocity diagram, CAD models with various pressure phase shapes were built. Three shapes were initially tested using CFD. In each analysis, the blades were tested on a 2D base in a two-blade configuration to see how the steam would flow through the blades. Lift, drag, relative velocity and pressure were all tested in each blade analysis to ensure the most efficient results. After creating the steam blade, we decided to design air blades with 3D simulations this was a completely new design that required new velocity triangles, power outputs, etc. As we had gained more theoretical and practical knowledge in the process, we were able to design very accurate blades using 3D simulations in each blade configurations and with nozzle placements varying to represent a rotating rotor or blade setup. Our team were able to increase the efficiency from 14.5% to 58%. Hello, my name is Tommy and I was a part of the blade design team. I'll perform optimizations and analysis of our blades through safety. There is very little knowledge regarding certain geometric aspects of impulse blades, such as the pitch to cord ratio and maximum thickness to cord ratio. To get these relationships ourselves, we used correlations published from a research paper in 1951 an examination of flow and pressure losses in blade rows of axial flow turbines, where a wide variety of reaction and impulse blades were tested. This provided us with the desired relationships needed in solving our blade geometry. From the correlations we acquired, our pitch to cord ratio is found to be 0.625 and our maximum thickness to cord ratio is found to be 0.292. By setting the core length as our input, the following blades were produced. For our air blades in STAR CCM, we extracted the force applied to the suction face by the flow. 
This provided us with the efficiency torque and power output for our models. The model on which had the highest efficiency and power output was selected as our most optimal blade. The cord length and the height of our steam blade was found in terms of lift and drag using Star CCM Plus, where the most optimal blade had the highest lift to drag ratio. Further optimizations in terms of lift and drag were performed on the pressure face of our blade, providing us with a more optimal shape. Oh hey there, I'm Tarek. I focused on the nozzle theory for the turbine. Steam flowing through the turbine needs to be carefully guided from the inlet valve. By placing a series of nozzles between the inlet and the blades, the steam can be aimed directly at the concave face of the blades, giving them enough power to turn the shaft. Research quickly brought us to the Delaval nozzle, commonly used in rockets and steam turbines. It utilizes a very specific geometry which allowed the fluids passing through it to reach the speeds with a Mach number greater than 1, aka supersonic flow in the axial direction. It does this by converting the heat energy at inlet to kinetic energy. The gas starts as compressible subsonic speeds in the convergence section of the nozzle, and as the mass flow rate is constant, the velocity increases until sonic speeds are achieved at the throat. This is known as choked flow. As the gas enters the divergence section, it rapidly expands and causes an acceleration to supersonic velocity. Shock waves may propagate backwards from here having a negative impact on the velocity, and so CFD simulations were run to find the optimum divergence flap angle. The Delaval nozzle requires a pressure difference with a higher pressure at the convergence section. Our pressure difference was 4 to 0.12 bar. MATLAB was used to theoretically calculate the cross-sectional areas and velocities at the throat and exit regions. Hi, I'm Michal. I'm going to talk you through some of the nozzle CFD I did throughout the year. We developed three nozzles, air under steam conditions, and steam conditions nozzles, air testing nozzles. So the air under steam conditions, the sole purpose of this nozzle was to confirm our CFD methodology was correct. Uh, it's easier to get the simulation running with air than with steam. So when the simulation was running as we expected, we applied the same methodology to the steam simulations. For each of the three nozzles, we used a stagnation inlet, a pressure outlet, and a symmetry blend. So they were all uh, tested in 3D space. The properties we used were got from Tarek's calculations. So the results we got for this nozzle, it expanded past the nozzle exit like we were hoping for, and the velocities of about 800 meters per second at the exit at about 400 meters per second to throw the residuals to converge quite well. So the next nozzle then is the steam nozzle. And the first number of simulations we run, it wasn't really expanding the way we wanted to. So to get from here to here, but we started the simulation with about a two bar differential. We slowly increased it until we got our four bar differential and then we got the expansion that we were looking for and we also got the velocities. My name is Akash. I looked after manufacturing, nozzle design and the video. A range of converging diverging nozzle geometries were optimized using Mihal CFD models by varying the pitch, divergence angle, and exit shape. When undertaking more advanced CFD studies combining blades and nozzles, it was found that the gas didn't follow an expected path. To mitigate these effects, we introduced a cylindrical incident at the exit of nozzles. This ensured uniform directional flow. Additive manufacturing played a substantial role in our turbine design. Initially we used FDM modeling to 3D print PLA parts during initial design iterations and for rapid prototyping. Specialized nozzles were developed for the sole purpose of air testing. These nozzles were resin printed using Vero white material which gave a very low surface roughness. They are printed on printers which are currently being used to develop PPE for frontline workers. The steam nozzles were to be printed in the Fab Lab Limerick using a specialized high temperature resin with a heat deflection temperature of 238 degrees at 4.5 bar. The nozzles were to have a much improved surface roughness to last year's titanium printed components. Hi, I'm Peter and I worked with FEA stresses and materials. They're just going to take the bit that I want. Um, Akash, I'm going to eat cereal for like 8 minutes. I'm busy now. I'm not coming in today. Day 67 of quarantine. My mother won't let me record videos. Cereal failure was predicted at 45,000 RPM due to the relatively low yield strength and high density of 316L stainless steel. The change of material to 2014 T6 aluminium significantly reduced the rotor stresses, improved the ease of manufacturing, increased factory safety, and reduced weight of the assembly by 56%. The new turbine has greatly reduced the amount of leakage points present. O-ring assembly and grooves have been properly designed to ensure that there are no breakages. The rotary shaft seal has been replaced by a turbocharger spec 
rotary shafts. The shaft now has tolerance ends for bearing fits. Axial play is fully constrained whilst allowing for thermal expansion. Rotors are also now properly offset from the nozzle hubs so that there is no contacting. The rotor stresses by redesigned geometry and changed material have been reduced by 65%. The rotor configuration has also had a part count reduction of 18 blade assemblies, 18 bolts and 2 plates. By using ceramic instead of steel balls in the bearing, the friction has been reduced by up to 40%. The bearings fully constrain the shaft axially and the bearings also allow thermal expansion. Nozzle geometries were optimised, improving the flow path of steam and reducing frictional losses. The nozzles have now been 3D printed from a Vera white material, giving a much smoother finish for a much cheaper price. Blade pitch, cord, length and height were examined for a range of nozzle positions and blading arrangements. The blade has been optimised using CFD, velocity diagrams and lift versus drag plots to increase the overall rotor torque by 16%, which subsequently increased increases the turbine's power output by 16%. My name is Oshin and I was involved with housing design and completed on SolidWorks. O-rings are placed in the grooves provided on the nozzle hub and central hub. Gaskets are placed between the nozzle hub and central hub. Nozzle hubs are then fitted inside the central hub and bolted to the nozzle hub using 6 and 3 bolts. On the side marked with a knight to indicate the side for the interference fit bearing. The keyway is placed in the slot on the shaft as shown. The rotor is slid over this with set screws used to fix and locate the rotor axially. The shaft seal is also placed in the groove provided with the taper and the housing used to close it. Housing is then placed over the rotor. The central hub and nozzle hub assembly is placed within the housing. Keyway used to fix the other rotor is then placed in the slot provided on the shaft. The other rotor is slid on to this keyway similar to on the other side. Set screw is once again used to fix and locate the rotor axially. The shaft seal is then placed in the groove provided. The other half of the housing is placed over this assembly and M3 bolts are used to fix the assembly. Only one half of the housing's flange has been threaded. The interference fit bearing is fitted to the shaft first using a hydraulic press by heating the bearing to 110 degrees Celsius. The housing is placed over this and fixed to the main turbine with 6 M3 bolts. The clearance bearing is fitted on the other side with the housing fixed to the main turbine in the same way. In sequence start. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 